it's me, Cece, and fall is finally upon us. Fall is my favorite season. I was born in October. The leaves are amazing. The fashion is amazing. And the drinks... The drinks are immaculate. Fall drinks are some of my favorite drinks. They're a great way to keep warm when the weather starts to get cold. You get your book, you get your blanket, you get your sweater, and you get your favorite fall drink. Nothing could be better. And now that I am actually trained as a barista, I know how to make all of my favorite fall drinks. So today, I am going to be sharing that knowledge with you. If you take written instruction better than visual instruction, all of the recipes are going to be down in the comments and the description below. But without further ado, let's go! For our first drink, let's go with our classic latte. Although I'm not a big latte drinker myself, I know that it is a very popular beverage and I love a good decaf latte every once in a while, but pumpkin spice lattes are a classic. Do I actually have pumpkin puree? Oh my god, I don't think that we have pumpkin puree. Okay, well never mind, I'm not making a pumpkin spice latte today. So we're gonna do a brown sugar spiced latte. So, in order to make a brown sugar spiced latte, you will need brown sugar. You will need espresso, milk of your choice, and various fall-like spices, again, of your choice. So the first step is to pour your espresso, well, pour your espresso or brew your coffee. Hopefully you know how to use your own coffee makers and espresso makers by now. Now if you were to just make a coffee, you would use whatever coffee you have and follow those same steps, but use a significant larger portion of it than the espresso because this thing is tiny. But get your espresso poured and then you want to foam up your milk. Now if you have an espresso maker, you probably have a milk steamer attached to that, but because I'm trying to be accessible, Instead of showing you my $100, $200, I, don't, I actually don't remember how expensive that thing was. Instead of showing you that multi-hundred dollar machine over there, I'm going to show you this $10 thing that you could probably get from, like, Home Goods or Walmart. I don't know. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to microwave our milk because desperate times, desperate measures, you could also heat it up on the stove, but I am currently using the stove to film, so... That's not happening! So we're gonna pop this into the microwave for like 30-40 seconds until it's like warm, maybe even hot would be better. And we are just going to let it do its thing. While that's heating up, we are going to add our spices, our brown sugar, and our espresso to this jar or cup or whatever vessel. So first we are going to put in all of our spices and sugar. I'm adding just like maybe a tablespoon. That's that's a bit more than a tablespoon. Shush! I'm gonna add like a, a tablespoon maybe of brown sugar and then a hefty bit of cinnamon, cardamom, and ginger. And if you were to make a pumpkin spice latte, you would also add the pumpkin in this step. Oh, that already smells so good! I'm so good at my job! So then you pour in your espresso. I'm just doing one shot so as to not waste espresso, but look! I'm trying to show off the crema! Then you would go ahead and stir that up, give the sugar a chance to melt and the spices a chance to bloom. If you have flavored syrups, that would probably be an easier option here, and that is what most baristas use. But unfortunately, I have no syrup here and I don't really feel like taking a couple of hours to make it right now. So we're just going with the brown sugar and all the spices right in the espresso. And then we get our milk! That is all nice and heated up. We take our milk foamer, and this is the easiest thing you're gonna do. You're just gonna stick the thing in and just... It's so easy. And there is our beautiful foamy milk and a milk thing that splattered all over the place. And now we are just going to take the milk and pour it right over our espresso. Trying not to spill anything. Channeling chemistry class from a bajillion years ago, and this is a very small latte, I'm realizing. And that's it. That's your brown sugar latte. This smells very good, but I don't want to ingest any caffeine at this ungodly hour of 3 p.m. So we're gonna put this off to the side and make a slightly less caffeinated beverage. So the next drink that we are going to make is a London Fog, 
with lavender. Now I'm just making it with lavender because that is one of my favorite drinks and it is the only thing that got me through my senior year of college. But a London Fog is essentially Earl Grey tea with vanilla syrup and steamed milk. So a London Fog with lavender would be Earl Grey tea, steamed milk, vanilla, and lavender. Now again, had I all the equipment that I have at my job, I would be using a lavender syrup and a vanilla syrup, but unfortunately I don't. But we do have lavender buds and vanilla extract here. Now a London Fog is very good on its own, so if you can't access lavender in any capacity, no problem. If you think that lavender tastes like soap, no problem. But I am going to take a little tea strainer thing, you know, the ones that do like the clampy thing? I'll, I'll show you in a second. This thing. And I'm just gonna take a tiny little bit of lavender and I am actually going to put it in with the tea and have it brew together. And that is how I'm going to get that delicious lavender scent and flavor into my beverage. So while the tea is brewing, you're gonna go ahead and steam your milk using whatever process you used it for the first drink. <coughs> Okay, we're done. We foam up the milk so that we have it ready. Computer, stop! And that's the tea! So now that that's done, we're gonna toss the tea bag in the lavender. And we are going to add in some white sugar and some vanilla. Just a little bit of white sugar. Give that a little stir. And then we pour in our steamed milk. Beautiful. Wonderful. Don't mess it up, don't mess it up, don't mess it don't do it CC! And that's your London Fog. And now, because I'm running late to work, I have to put the other drinks on hold, but um, they're, they're not that difficult. So after seeing how severely lacking in beverage supplies I was, I went grocery shopping to get myself some fun things and immediately came home and made myself some Ponyo, aka emotional support, milk. Here's the recipe. <laughs> I am in the process of recording this video, but my friend just gave me the best drink idea the other day and I have to make it. Okay, hear me out. The drink is maple cinnamon chai latte. It's not so good, right? Now, most coffee shops will use a chai concentrate to make their chai lattes with. I do not have a chai concentrate here, but I do know the recipe for the chai concentrate for the coffee shop that I work at. I'm not the hugest fan of it, I'm not gonna lie, but don't tell them. But the recipe is a combination of liquid sweeteners like honey and vanilla syrup and spices along with actual chai, like loose chai. So what we're making here is actually pretty close to a chai concentrate, but it's using maple and cinnamon to add that little bit of kick to it. I think I might also grab some ginger though because I like the warm flavors. So I'm also gonna add ginger and cardamom. Cardamom is what we usually use in our chai concentrate along with cinnamon and I'm also putting ginger in it because shh, I'm also putting ginger in it because I'm a big fan of like that warm but like sweet kick that ginger gives. I'm a fan of it, we're rolling with it. All right, step one, brew the chai. Take a bag of your favorite chai or loose chai if you have it and then you want to fill the cup about halfway ish with water and let it brew so while this is brewing we are going to foam the milk and i'm going to treat myself and use my fancy little steamer today and i'm actually going to go ahead and put the spices into the tea now while it's still like hot and brewing and stuff so i'm going to add a hefty amount of cinnamon. That's that's a lot of cinnamon. If I had to guess quantities, it would probably be a quarter teaspoon, but I'm really just eyeballing it. And then I'm gonna say a pinch of ginger and a pinch of cardamom. That's a bit more than a pinch. The tea is now done brewing and we are now going to add our syrup. Now again, it depends on how sweet you like your beverages, but I'm gonna go with like a teaspoon? That felt more like a tablespoon. I like just enough to cover the bottom of the cup, but again, it's up to you. Stir it up and add your milk. This turned out very foamy, but I think it will be okay. Oh my gosh. Do you see? 
Let me hang on. Look at how beautiful that is. I'm so good at my job. Okay, so this is actually my first time trying the maple cinnamon chai. So I'm just gonna set you guys up right there and give this a try. Mm. That's so hot, but that's so good. I feel like it tastes like cookies. It tastes like some kind of cookie. I don't know what, snickerdoodles. Oh my God, wow. I, was, I didn't realize how much I need this beverage. Oh my gosh, my friend is a genius. One thing that I will say about the drink is that the spices are kind of either sinking to the bottom or floating to the top, which I'm not mad at. They're still like in the beverage and like the flavors are like seeping out, but it is it is a little bit annoying. I believe the technical term for this would be lacking synergy, but you know what? It's so good. All right, yep. That does it. This is the new chai that I'm putting in the video. So those were my favorite fall recipes. Hopefully the written instructions will help clarify whatever craziness I was saying. Because my method for making drinks is a bit of just like eyeballing it and seeing what works, I don't tend to give instructions very well. If you liked this video, make sure to leave a like down below, comment some of your favorite recipes, or comment if my instructions were ridiculously unclear, which I know they were, and subscribe! to see more of my lovely face. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye!